Hi, everybody, and welcome to our uh, ongoing series of reseller education. We, our plan is now to do, uh, starting the first Tuesday of every month at 4 o'clock Central, putting on something to uh, try to talk to you guys about new releases, new features, or uh, how to handle objections, like in this case, or sales opportunities, or just what things are going on in the industry and what we're seeing, all of that kind of stuff. So I'm happy to be here today. My name's Rob Clifton, uh, CEO of Avid Mobile. I put I update these little pictures. This is me. This is my uh, new fiance, Tara. This is my daughter. Some of you haven't seen her since she was very little, so I just thought I'd throw some pictures up there for you, so you guys could could see my family there. Uh, thank you, thank you, viewer seven. I appreciate that. You know, I think uh, through I have conversations every single day with you know current resellers that are have a big opportunity and that are interested in getting some help to figure out how to close the people or how to price them or whatever. And again, you guys are always welcome to reach out to me and, you know, ask questions or, you know, I even participate in some people's calls sometimes to uh, help sell, um, you know, to big clients and things like that. So I'm always willing to get on a phone call and a little screen share, help put together some demos or whatever it is that you guys need to be able to be successful. So always feel free to reach out. Um, I'm just Rob at avidmobile.com, so I'm, you know, pretty easy to find. You know, one of the things that I get from talking to certain resellers is that, uh, that a lot of people, and I think this is, you know, just people in general, when they go out and they start talking to a new person, that they want to sell the stats or they want to sell mobile. They want to talk about how exciting it is because that's honestly what got us into it in the first place. You know, we thought, this is really exciting, so we want to go tell people about our product. And I think that's probably one of our biggest stumbling blocks because that's not really what we're selling. Um, it is and it isn't, but work with me here for just a second. Um, you know, we know retailers aren't there aren't using it. We see it all over the place, and we wonder why. Why aren't people using it? We know how powerful it can be. Um, we do know that when they do want to use it, that you know one of their biggest things is that they want to drive revenue that's 28 percent of people if we look at you know that is a good stat to kind of go off of and here's why it doesn't matter what you are selling today it can be mobile marketing it could be tires it could be um paper products you know for individual businesses that you know because they all got to buy toilet paper and they got to buy it from somewhere so they might as well buy it from you right well the reality is that 10% of businesses right now are looking for something to help them drive revenue. And about 15% more than that are open to the idea of doing just that. And that pretty much puts us right here at that number. But so if we are told no by somebody that they're not interested, there's a variety of reasons why that could be but they're probably somewhere in that other 70%, which is why that I say over and over again to people that you can't just hold out your hope and dreams on one client. You can't even hold out your hopes and dreams on five clients. That sales is always a numbers game, and I always have to talk to 20 people to actually have a conversation with five of them. And out of those five that I talk to, I know that only one or two of them are actually going to be a real potential customer, no matter how freaking good at sales I am. It doesn't matter how good I am. That there's only a percentage of people that are actually looking to really do something right now. And that's a very, very important piece that you got to understand, especially when you go into sales and you start opening up opportunities. So the biggest thing that I can say is we always have to open up as many opportunities as possible every single day. We got to continue to fill our pipeline. We got to continue to talk to 50, 60, 70, 80 people, uh, if at all possible, per day, unless we're doing some other type of uh, lead generating activity that brings leads in our door. And if we're not, then it's our, you know, it's us, our telephone, our feet, and you know, talking to as many people as 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 we possibly can. When, um, you know, and and the focus today is really this is very short. This is very succinct, and I'm going to talk about how to make a pitch and how to handle people that say no, right? And 
Um, you know, I, a Dale Carnegie quote is always good, right? You can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in uh, two years by trying to get people interested in you. And that goes back to my first couple slides there. Don't start off any conversation by talking about mobile, talking about how many people open up text messages, talking about how many people read them or click on them or showing them a demo of something. That's not how we start a conversation. Because if we actually want to get somebody interested, then we have to find out if they actually have an interest in growing their business. And there were lots of pauses in that, but that's what they have to be interested in. Because by, by its crux, by its nature, if somebody is not, if, if it's not one of those customers that we're talking to that just needs it for a communication, if they don't just need it to, you know, intercompany communication because they got a thousand employees or they don't need it for, uh, you know, some type of customer service, then the only reason they're going to buy it is because they want to grow. And if that's not them, if, if, we don't get that answer, then we don't, they don't, we don't worry about it. Here's the standard rules of objection handling, right? And I actually have a, a video in the reseller content that I recorded a few years ago, and it kind of goes over these standard rules, but it's really meant on how to handle objections much later in the sales cycle. And, you know, restate the objection, relate to what they said, offer new information or a new question, ask again for a commitment or see the demo. But that's not, that's standard. That's not what I'm talking about today. What I'm talking about today is opening up new opportunities and how to get past the very beginning of that no, when somebody says no, or they say we're not interested very early in the equation. And think back to when you've started some conversations with some people. Did you start off by talking to them about open rates or did you start off by just showing them a demo and tell them how they can text people? And then they, how many of them came back and said, well, I don't want to text my customers. I don't want to bother them. Right? Is that the objection you got? Well, we're asking the wrong question. Okay? Because although this sounds like super generic, it is the most important question that you can ask somebody. But you, you know, you have to be a real business consultant. You have to sound like you know what the heck you're talking about. And I'm going to show you how to do that with just a couple statements that you're, you know, that you want to try to implement into what you're saying on a daily basis. Okay? So, you know, if I'm first calling somebody, you know, I, I might say something, you know, semi-generic, hey, what's going on? How are you? You know, that's what everybody says, right? And then everybody goes into just becoming a salesperson. Hi, I'm with Avid Mobile. My name's Rob. You know, we work well with people and businesses just like yourself on helping to grow their revenues and do blah, blah, blah. You know, um, is that something you're interested in? Or can I tell you a little bit about it? Or can I sit down and show it to you? Well, you haven't got any interest yet, so they're going to say no to that, right? So throw all that out the window. The thing that we got to get to very quickly in a conversation, and I'm talking about like one of the first like couple things that you say to somebody, and you're, you want to be blunt about it, as, as, as blunt as you possibly can be, okay? When, you're, when I talk to somebody about, about this, I say to them, Hey, yeah, you know, hey, what's going on? Oh, nothing much. I'm just working. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, actually, you know, I'm a business growth person. Uh, I work with a lot of companies like yours in this space, but I, I, it really comes down to just this. Some of the people I talk to, they have plenty of customers and they're not really doing anything in terms of marketing because they don't need any more business. And some of the people I talk to are really thinking about the future. They want to grow. They're trying to add more business every single day and they're smart investors and they're trying to figure out the best possible way to grow their business. So I'm trying to figure out, I don't know which one of those, where you guys really stand today. How is your, how is your customer base and your current revenues? Are they where you want them to be? Or could you take on another 25 to 50 new clients this month and 25 of them are going to stay longer? Could you take that many more customers? And then, then you wait for their response, right? Just like I was, that's called latency, right? We don't want to, we don't want to talk too much, but we have to, we have to understand where these, where these people are coming from. And we have to talk to those people that actually want more business. And a lot of people do, but not everybody. There are certain percentages of businesses that really do have 
as much business as they can handle. They're running it themselves. They're busy every second of the day. They can't bring on any more business, and they don't even want to. But there's a lot of people that really do want to grow their business. And if that's, if that's the answer that you get, that they know we could actually, we would, we would be interested in, in growing business, our business a little bit. We'd be interested in bringing on some, some new people. And if they are, then you say, hey, that's what we do. You know, that's, that is solely what we do. We, any business person should think about any investment they make in marketing or advertising as the single best investment they could ever make. Because if you invest in your own business and your own business growth and you add customers, not just this month, but next month and the next month and the next month, and those people keep coming back to you, you're laying a foundation of your own company. You see, if today my business is quote unquote successful, I'm making enough money, my doors are staying open, I'm not at risk of losing my business, and I'm making some amount of profit every single day. That's awesome. And that's where a lot of these businesses that you go and talk to, where they're actually at, they're making money. But a whole lot of them would like to make more money. And the beauty of it is, if I can add 25 customers and those 25 customers come back next month and a new 25 come in, and then I add 25 the next month and I add 75 new customers to the overall customer base and I continually show growth in that customer base, then that all, all of that money is what we call top line revenue. I'm already paying all my bills for my business. My rent's already paid. My employees are paid. I'm already buying my product. I've already got the doors open. My taxes are paid. Everything's paid. But if I had 75 new customers over the next three months, I literally just have my cost of my product. Everything else is profit, meaning my net profit on any of those new transactions are really just my cost of the goods sold, not taking out all that overhead and stuff, which means my profit margin is just a lot better. This is where advertising really comes in. And, and this is what I say to people very early on. Okay, I say, look, this is what any type of marketing should be. Okay, If you're a smart investor, then you track every single thing that you do. If you lay $20 down on the table for anything, a print ad, a radio spot, um, you know, some other type of marketing, some flyer, some mailer, whatever it is that you ever do, if you lay that $20 down on the table, you better be able to track that you got five new customers walk in the door and they spent $20 a piece and you brought in $100. That's what marketing should be, okay? And then if you're doing it like that, and you can put $20 down on the table and get back 100 you always should try to put down $40 for that same thing and see if you can get back 200 And then $80 and see if you can get back 400 And keep multiplying that. And that is a smart investment. And that's also a scalable opportunity of learning how to grow a customer base. And then if you can grow it enough, would you like to be able to open up a second location? That's always a great thing to talk about. And you see, I'm talking about everything so far about smart investment, growth, and a return on investment where I'm putting money in these people's pocket. That is very hard to say no to. You know what's easy to say no to? Do you want to text your customers? That's really easy to say no to. If you just solely come in and start showing a demo, or you solely come in and just say, hey, this is how it works. We put a tablet here on your table and people walk in and they enter their mobile number and they get back a coupon and then they, you can send out coupons to those people and those people come in the door. That's how everybody's pitching it. But what I'm saying is you've got to talk about growth of a customer base and you've got to say things like laying $20 down on the table. You better be able to track and see that you brought in five new customers that each you know, spent $20 and that you brought back in $100 of gross revenue. And since that $100 of gross revenue is top line revenue, the only cost for you really is your cost of goods sold. In some cases, that might be the food product. In other cases, it might be, you know, the service people or whatever that happens to be. You've got to, you know, tailor it a little bit to their business. But you actually got to talk about the dollars. You got to put it back in their pocket and you got to get them to agree that they do want new customers and that they essentially they're agreeing by letting you continue that they're willing to invest in that customer growth. And that's why I say to people, Smart business people, smart business owners. I say that right to their face. Smart business owners, this is what they do. They put $20 down on the table. They watch 
to see if in that time frame did they get back five new customers and did that put a hundred dollars of new business on the table and three of those people are going to be repeat customers it's going to bring me residual income in the future because they're going to come back to my business then we're talking about growth of an overall customer base you see what what i'm talking about there is is relative it's business i'm talking about business i'm not even talking about marketing yet or how we do it or anything like that but when we finally get to that point we can say that's what we do we just use the most powerful weapon available to marketers today that's the mobile phone of your potential customers and current customers and we get them to uh, we utilize that to actually drive that revenue to measure it and to quantify it so that you can track that you brought in x x number of dollars let's look at an example right when i say you've got to tailor this conversation to any individual you've got to tailor it to them you've got to you know talk to them in terms of the products or goods or you know the pizza they sell or the bicycles they sell or you know whatever the case may be right this is something that i say to to people if look our goal here going into this is we want to pull in just 50 new clients okay 50 and i want 50 percent of those people to enjoy it and to want to come back once a month after that and if that happens and we bring in 50 new clients times your average transaction of let's say twenty dollars right that's a thousand dollars of new revenue that we brought in the door but that's just month one because it compounds after that what happens in month two you get 25 returning customers that came in last month for the first time times the twenty dollars plus the 50 new ones now we're up to fifteen hundred dollars a month and our business is actually growing this is top line revenue increases month three same math but and now we got 50 returning customers because we got 20 from each you know half of those from each of the first two months and now we're up to 50 new and 50 returning customers how about we continue to do that until we hit month 12. now we've got eight thousand dollars of additional business in the door over that first year and that's just with 50 new clients per month that we're bringing in the door eight thousand dollars of new gross revenue top line revenue above and beyond what you're currently making today out of that we take out our 50 percent of food cost or whatever we're literally talking about four thousand dollars of net profit in your pocket if that's the type of you know if that's the type of business it is and of course you can have conversations with them about it what their cost of goods sold is what their profit margins need to be what their average price of their customer is all of that kind of thing because you have to you know be able to tailor that a little bit to their to them but uh, again you know I'm only referencing a couple things here. And if I just reviewed it real fast with you, what I would say would be, look, we only focus on businesses that are actually trying to increase their revenues. We are only looking for people that actually are willing to do what the smartest business people do, which is take $20 out, put it on the table, and then track and measure it to see that they brought in five new customers and now those five customers, they got $100 of new, rev of, of new business. And that they made more money than they invested and then that smart business person will scale that and turn that into forty dollars of investment to bring in 10 new customers and we use mobile as a method to be able to bring these new customers in and our real goal here is to just say 50 new clients a month and if we bring in 50 new clients per month and half of those stay and become regular customers of yours returning customers some of the some businesses it might be that you know it's a gym and so they're just signing up you know people to a membership plan so they're going to pay every month anyway right so we're telling them we're going to do 50 new trial accounts or 50 new free memberships and then if half of those stay and we get 25 memberships at 9.99 a month you know what does that revenue mean to you if we continue to do that over the course of the next 12 months right um what if we could scale that number to 150 uh free memberships a month and, and half of those stayed would that be better right how many do you need um you know that's the kind of conversations that we got to have and then you know take and then talk to them about what does that look like the following month when you've got half of those people on there and, and the following month and the, and the month after that you know if it's a realtor you know if if i'm using signs out in front of their listings where people can text in and get a flyer and that's what i'm selling to realtors and i'm selling that product at 19.99 a month and it comes with a virtual business card or you know 39.99 a month if they've got more than 10 listings or $99 a month if they got more than 30 listings, whatever it is, and they put these signs out there, 
And that generates just 15 new leads per month because those people text into that sign to get the flyer and the price. And they call those people back. And then they find out that that house doesn't fit them, but they want a different house down the street or they've got a house to sell. And if that produces one transaction or referral every month, that's the average real estate commission. And if they do that over 12 months, that's $54,000 of additional revenue that they brought in the door just by picking up some new leads from their virtual flyers. Is that a big enough equation right there? If I just showed that alone to a real estate agent that I could get them to sign up for $39 a month. What is $39 a month annually? It's nothing compared to the type of revenue that can, that can be brought in the door. What are people saying no to? Think about the conversations that you're having with your potential customers. Think about the first things that you're saying to people. Are you just talking about you and mobile and stats and demos? Or are you first talking to them about the, the thing that they actually care about the most? Their investment, the growth of their customer base, and if they're not interested in this piece right here, you're probably wasting your time. And we know that's going to be a percentage of people. That means if somebody is, if I'm talking to somebody and I'm speaking the way that I'm talking to you guys, and I'm being blunt and upfront and talking about the investment and growth and, you know, actually adding 25 residual customers every month, and I'm putting numbers behind that, and I'm saying, you know, and I'm asking them, is that something you want? Do you actually want to grow by 25 customers a month? Okay, then let's, then let's talk about the semantics of it after that. Now let's talk about how it actually happens. And how does it actually happen? We put a tablet landing page out there. We capture some of your current customers. We give them feedback to forward out some coupons to some of their friends. We get some of those people to come in, right? We go and like a lot of other people are doing, they don't sell SMS as a standalone but they sell it in correlation or combination with some of the other, with some other things. You know, for instance, you know, it is really, really easy to set up like a uh, mobile uh, Facebook landing page, carousel ad or something like that. And you guys have seen those for different businesses. As you're going through your phone, these little ads are going through talking about whatever. And they look cool and they slide across your phone like this. It's very easy to create these for a business. Now, if you take one of these pages and you help the business set them up and you charge them $250 up front to help them set up this Facebook uh, carousel ad, and it says, hey, get an instant coupon for a free entree, and, you geo, and it's geo targeted, you market that directly to the people that you want to target you know, within a 10 mile radius of wherever they are, a three mile radius of wherever they are. Target people that are right by, right where they are. And then as soon as they click that ad, it takes them right to a kiosk page. And it shows the, you know, what it is. It shows the, you know, it's, and then all they do is enter their mobile number to get that coupon. And if we get, you know, a hundred of those out a month, 50 of those people come in, and 25 of those come back month after month, you just took your marketing and mobile marketing, extended that locally to people, you know, extend that locally to people that are nearby and got them to opt in. You're actually bringing in new customers from outside that organization. Some people do it with mailers. They say, we're going to put this mailer together that says text wings, the 72727, and we're going to circulate it just in this area. And this is how much that mailer is going to cost. But you're actually giving them something to reach out into the community, right? Give them the full solution. And sometimes that's what it takes to be able to get, to get those people. You can always do it from your current customer base. You can always do it by putting some stuff on their Facebook page or whatever. But sometimes that when you're talking about stealing business from the competition, reaching out to some people, uh, you know, reaching out to some people that are outside of their store that don't come in now, Bring in that, those 50 new customers and getting 25 of them to stay month over month and seeing that compound out and really bring in new, new revenue over the course of time. That's some of the conversations that really get people excited and willing to go ahead and pay you today 
to get all that set up. And then it just takes three or four of those clients and you've got that residual mailbox money coming in, you know, because you're helping them manage all that. You're helping them schedule out their promotions. You're helping them come up with good offers that are really going to get people excited. And, you know, you got a new customer. That's it for today, everybody. I'm going to stay on and answer any questions. If you do, in fact, have any. Um, thank you. I'm going to stop the recording.